Hello and what is up YouTube? My name is G3Iron and today we are talking about how to craft for profit. This is the first part of a three-part episode series where we discuss some tips and some tricks and some principles that you can take and learn and then apply in your Path of Exile gameplay. So if you are new to the channel, you can go ahead and like, subscribe, and ding the bell to be notified about future episodes and future discussions just like this one. And if you're a returning member of the G3 community, you know the way how all this works. All of our relevant links and information is going to be posted down below in the video description. And at the end of today's discussion, there are going to be a couple of questions that we will ask you to weigh in on based on the topics that we are addressing today, which are, of course, crafting for profit. We do have an example included in today's episode where you'll be able to choose either option A, B, or C, and then there are timestamps for you to jump towards kind of like a choose your own adventure sort of thing where you can choose your option for crafting and then see what result happens and whether or not it's a profitable craft for you. So anyway, without any further ado, let's jump right in. As we dive into creating some rules and some principles for crafting for profit, there are really three principles that we need to follow, and we're going to be focusing on each of these in individual episodes. The first one is that you need to sell items at greater value than the cost of creating the item. This ensures profit. The second rule is going to be create items that are appealing to a broad audience. This, of course, ensures a quick sale where you are reaping your rewards quickly. And and thirdly and finally, creating items that are confusing to make and therefore ensure fewer competitors. These are the three hallmark rules when it comes to making items that will turn you a profit in Path of Exile. For us today, we're going to be focusing on selling items at greater value than the cost of creation. Rule number one, if this seems basic, it's because it is. If you sell something at a price point that is higher than what it costs you to make it, you're making profit. If you switch those around, then you're losing currency and nobody wants to do that. There are two big factors that come into play as you are crafting items in Path of Exile, which will dictate the profit as well as the cost. These are going to be the risk and then the knowledge of the profit margin for the particular item that you are crafting. If an item is particularly safe to craft, it's going to be low risk and it's going to be pretty apparent in its knowledge base. For instance, if you know how to take and turn in a chromatic recipe, that's relatively apparent in the game. If you know how to craft something using jeweler's orbs or using fusing orbs, these are basic apparent uses of items that are relatively safe at first glance. Crafts which are both safe and apparent are going to have relatively low margins for profitability simply because everyone has the knowledge to be able to do them and because it's safe it doesn't cost very much to get into that market. The margins therefore are going to be pretty thin. There are some crafts though that are a bit more risky and maybe the knowledge of how to go about crafting them is a bit more obscure. So you'll get these medium sort of tier of crafting where it's more risky, there's more chance that you will spend more currency on creating the item than the item is actually worth. That is a risk where you are potentially throwing currency away. Path of Exile has a long and storied history in its crafting about keeping secrets. A lot of the big time crafters try to keep things relatively hush hush because the more informational pieces are out there about a particular craft, the less obscure something becomes, the more apparent it becomes, and the less profit margin there is for players who are willing to take the risk in order to make that obscure item or follow that obscure path to creation. The most hazardous as well as the most secretive or confidential of all types of crafts in Path of Exile are of course the most profitable. It could either be something that's incredibly hazardous, maybe it's got a very, very low return, something like using a Vol Orb or double corrupting something. That's very, very hazardous. Potentially you're taking an item, bringing it into the Temple of Atsawaddle to double corrupt it, or even just using a Vol Orb on it, and maybe the entire value of your item goes kapoof. It could also have great outcomes that will make you enough currency to fund your entire build for the rest of the league. So we've got this split here, risk as well as profit and knowledge. Depending on how much of a community knows how to do something and depending on how risky it is, is going to be our determining factors when we are seeking to create an item that will sell at a greater value than the cost that we put into making it. This means that we've got some very basic principles we need to follow. First off, we need to know the value of the item 
what it is presently at the moment that you are crafting. If you are crafting an item and all of the sudden information gets released and that value of that item changes, then that's going to change your opinion and your inputs and your values on the margins as well as the risk that you are taking as you're crafting the item. You need to know what the value of the item is that you are crafting. Secondly, you need to know the costs of the materials you'll be using. How many chaos orbs does it take to spam and create something that's exceptional on the item level base that you are using? How many exalted will you need to use in order to get that one last mod on a particular chess piece? How many fusings do you need to throw at something in order to make it go from a three link to a four link or from a four link to a five link or from a five link to a six link? You need to know the cost of the materials you'll be using in order to understand and greater value your own craft as you are getting it ready for the market. This brings us to our example today. Let's say you notice a particularly popular unique chess piece, this league. Let's just pretend. Let's say that with six links, the chess piece is selling on the market for six exalted. With five links, the chess piece is worth two exalted. With four or fewer links, the chest is only worth a single exalted. This gives us a pretty wide spectrum of value on this particular item. It could be as much as six exalted, it could be as few as one exalted, depending on what we're going to do with this particular craft. So for this example scenario, I'm going to give you three options of what you can choose from. You can either A, sell the chest as it is, which means you'll profit just one exalted, B, you can guarantee five links on this particular unique chess piece via the jeweler's touch prophecy, or C, you can roll for six socket six link with fusings on your crafting bench, which will cost you 1500 fusings. Make your selection now. There are timestamps down below as well as on the screen presently for you to follow and for your convenience to jump ahead and see what sort of results your crafting choice produces. Will you sell the chest as is with option A? Guarantee a five link with the jeweler's touch prophecy, option B? Or will you jump all the way down to option C and guarantee a six link chest piece via 1500 fusings on your crafting bench? Well, welcome. If you chose option A to simply sell the chess piece as it is, then congratulations, you profit one exalted. You are now one exalted richer. That exalt came as the result of a random drop in the form of an item. Essentially, you dropped an X as you were killing monsters and playing the game naturally. You got lucky. You didn't learn anything about how to craft, and this may have been the right choice early on in a league, for instance, if you didn't have the currency for options B or C. In which case, if you chose A under those circumstances, then hooray, you made the right choice. Now you'll be one exalted richer for making future crafting decisions. Not every single crafting option is always available to every player. There are costs that are involved. We need to remember our first rule of profit crafting. We want to sell the item at a greater value than the cost of creation. If you don't have enough currency to be able to go with option B or C, then option A is perfectly acceptable. And now you'll be able to build on the momentum of selling this item as you make future decisions. Well, welcome if you chose option B. Option B was, of course, guarantee five links with the Jeweler's Touch Prophecy. This means that you've spent, at least at our hypothetical market scenario, 18 chaos to buy a Jeweler's Touch Prophecy and turned what would have been only one exalted if you would have chosen to sell the chess piece as it was originally into a two exalted minus 18 chaos value. You needed to have the knowledge about the prophecy. You needed to know about Jeweler's Touch. A lot of players are unfamiliar with Jeweler's Touch and simply don't realize its value and don't know how to apply it. So you needed to have the knowledge about Jeweler's Touch and the currency available to you to take the risk, 18 chaos, in order to increase your profits. And you have increased your profits. Yes, it costs you 18 chaos up front, but now whatever that difference is between 18 chaos to that second exalted that you've earned off of your craft have made you that much richer. If you have the knowledge in Path of Exile to identify crafts that have a cheaper production cost than sale cost, you will always be able to make currency. 
Early on in G3, while we were getting started up as a community learning Path of Exile, learning the economics in the game, the Jewelers Touch 5 Link Prophecy was something that we went to league after league after league as a currency maker as we applied it to popular chess piece. This is a very safe, reliable, but also rather apparent way to go about crafting. Because of its apparent availability, and many players know how to take advantage of this, it means that it's not necessarily going to always turn you a great profit, but it does give you a consistent, safe way to increase your currency at almost any point in time you choose to use it. Well, welcome all you big risk takers. If you chose to see guarantee for a six link with fusings via the crafting bench cost of 1500 fusings, welcome. You have chosen the right place for you. You've spent roughly seven exalted worth of fusings to create an item that on the market is only selling for six exalted. If you simply would have rolled this using fusings yourself, maybe you could have come out with a profit as long as it's less fusings than your selling cost. So in other words, if you use less than six exalted worth of fusings in order to roll this particular chess piece, you're still making profit. In fact, if you use less than 5x worth of fusings and you've actually made a much larger margin than what you would have made if you would have chosen either option A or B. The problem with saying that is that it all depends on whether or not you hit the particular craft you're aiming for, in this case, a six link with fusings or not. If you hit it, that's great. Then the luckier that you are spamming fusings, the richer you'll be in terms of your profits. But there are going to be those streaks where you just don't hit what you're going for. And in those scenarios, if you don't have the currency to back up your very highly risky craft, then you will end up in a massive, massive hole without currency at your availability to pivot or make another decision while you're crafting. If you choose to just try to be lucky, then it's the least consistent method for making crafting decisions. Some of us sure are luckier than others, and I'm sure there are going to be many of you down below in the comments who say, yeah, well, Iron, I totally crafted this great insert item here for less than insert value here and sold it for insert profit here. I'm sure many of you are going to say that and that's wonderful. I'm glad that you guys have gotten lucky and made profits that way. The reality is, is that the riskier profits in Path of Exile are balanced out with the knowledge on how to accomplish them and then the market demand for those particular items. The luckier you are, sure, the greater profits it will be. And the unluckier you are, the more currency will simply be thrown away. So let's evaluate what this principle is. We want to sell items at a greater value than at the cost of creation. We could have chosen option A, which was safe and apparent. Simply sell the item and walk away with a profit. We could have chosen option B, which was a bit more risky. We needed some currency in order to invest in it. And it was a bit more obscure. We needed to have a little bit of knowledge about how to go about acquiring and using the jeweler's touch. Or C, there was the more hazardous or the more confidential or the more restricted side of things. Even let's say, for instance, that you wanted to choose to slam 1500 fusings onto a guaranteed profit item. Oftentimes, in order to reach that crafting bench recipe, you will need a character that knows exactly where that is. So even the knowledge of reaching that bench recipe is something that is confidential and not necessarily known or available to every player. The safer the craft, the less profit margin there is in it, and the more hazardous the craft in general, the more profit there will be in it. The more apparent the knowledge about how to go about crafting a particular item, the less margin because more players will have access to that. And the more confidential the recipe or the particular technique used for crafting the item, the more profit margin there will be because there are fewer players able and knowledgeable enough to enter that particular market. Well, thanks so much for watching today and for interacting. I look forward to all of your answers to our discussion questions down below that we can chat about today. As I'm sure I've made mistakes throughout our discussion today, feel free to point those out. And if you've got suggestions for how we can continue to improve our community around here, feel free to let us know down in the comments. First off, which option did you choose? Be honest. Let us know which option you would choose. Or maybe there's another option entirely that you'd like to throw into the ballpark. Maybe there's an option D or E that you wish we would have put up today. Which option did you choose or which options would you like to see added? Secondly, are you risk averse in your own crafting? Do you see something that's a bit more risky and therefore you simply say, 
I'm not going to craft that way. I've got a couple of friends in guild who as soon as they see that something is a risky craft, they back off of it. I've got other friends in guild that as soon as they hear something is, is risky, regardless of how profitable it will be, they jump right into it headlong. Are you risk averse in your own crafting? Our third discussion question today, are there different times for different methods of crafting in your own experience? We talked a little bit today about how early on in the league, maybe if a chess piece worth an exalted drops for you, you shouldn't waste your time crafting on it. Maybe you should simply sell it and then use that momentum to build with the currency that you've got now available to you. Maybe there are other times in the league where that would be a good decision and other times where that would be a poor decision. What about you and your experience? Are there different times during the league that you change your own crafting methods and strategies? Thanks again so much for watching. In next episode, we'll be discussing how to craft items that will appeal to a broad audience, how to target your audience, and then target your crafts that will be appealing to that audience. I hope right after you craft something today, a Mirror of Calandra will drop for you. Thanks for watching that video. If you'd like more information on any of our discussion points today, you can see them down below in the video description. If you'd also like to join our Discord or support our Patreon, you can do so with the links down below. Thanks again and big shout out to all of our Patreon supporters.